Good evening, everyone. It is 630 and I would love to honor your time this evening with our presentation. So uh, I am Julie McNamara, the junior senior guidance counselor here at Rose Catholic. And I am joined to this evening with Miss Joy Clements, our media specialist. Um, she is off screen currently. Yeah. Uh, but she will be uh, helping with technical things this evening. This is kind of my first go around with something uh, this cool and amazing. So uh, bear with me as we kind of work through things this evening and hopefully it will go smoothly. Uh, this Zoom meeting is being recorded. Uh, we do plan to post this uh, both in the junior and the senior Google College classrooms and also potentially on uh, the school website. Uh, and the Prezi that I use this evening, that will also be posted um, in, I think I'm just going to put that on the school website uh, for you to be able to view again at a later date. So I don't know that you really need to feel like you need to scramble and write a bunch of notes down. Uh, you should be able to view this again at a later date. So um, as we move through the presentation tonight, if you have any questions regarding the information I'm sharing, if you could put that uh, those questions in the chat, and then Ms. Clements will kind of be collecting those for me, and we'll kind of do a, a question answer sh session um, at the end of my presentation. That way, um, if we have parents who feel pretty good and, and they want to exit the meeting at that point, they certainly could. And if there's others who would like to stay on to be part of that question answer session, um, you can go ahead and stay. Uh, again, just one more call for attendance. If you haven't yet uh, put your name in the chat, we are trying to get an idea of how many people joined us this evening. So if you could just type your name in the chat, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege uh, to work with your students here at Gross as they decide what their next steps are um, after graduating from Gross Catholic. I do get to support them in whatever they feel is kind of their next best step, whether that is looking for a, a two-year associate's degree at maybe a community college or a four-year degree through a college or university, joining the military, or maybe they decide that uh, continuing with, with school is not uh, in their best interest right at this time, and so maybe they want to go to work full-time. You know, whatever that is, um, it's, it's really my job to support them and, and help them get to that next step. So together we'll kind of figure this out, um, me, you, your students, and, uh, and hopefully um, enjoy celebration at graduation, sending them off um, to the next part of their life. Please know that I'm happy to answer any and all of your questions tonight or anytime. Um, if I don't answer a question, uh, if I don't have an answer to a question when you ask, um, please do give me the grace and a little bit of time to research and find the answer for you. I, I will do that. Um, this is my fourth year um, in this position as college counselor, junior, senior counselor. Um, prior to working as a counselor, I was a math teacher for 12 years. So I've been in education for a while, um, but the, the college scene um, has been a little new to me. I've learned a lot in the past four years. I am by no means an expert, um, but I am willing to research and find answers um, when I don't have them. So um, with that being said, Let's go ahead and get started. I am going to uh, share my screen with you. I'm, oh, now we're not going for. <laughs> okay, I think we're good now. All right, so a few things to be aware of uh, junior year. Here's a little to-do list for you. Uh, colleges do use the end of junior year uh, GPA for admissions. So one of the things that you can definitely do for your junior student is to strongly encourage them to do the very, very best in their classes, which you probably already do. Um, but, you know, especially um, finishing up this junior year with as strong of a GPA as possible uh, when they return to school in the fall for their senior year and they begin to send transcripts for admission to schools they'll be sending their transcript that includes freshman, sophomore, and junior year. So that's the information colleges are going to see. And so for that reason, you know, really pushing to get that GPA as strong as possible um, is, one of, is a great thing that you can do. Um, you know, st starting to research colleges and begin a list of schools and requirements needed for admission uh, to the schools. I've actually started this process um, with the juniors. We actually were working on it today. 
Um, I'll get a little bit more into that later on when I tell you about the college and career planning project that we've been working on. Um, but this process has started and you could certainly ask your student to show you um, how they've been researching colleges. I'm sure they'd be happy to do that. Um, taking the ACT or SAT at least once by the end of the spring of their junior year is not a bad idea. Um, ACT info um, is also in their Google Classroom, so I do highly recommend that you sit down with your student, ask them to uh, log into the Google Classroom and show you these items that are available for you. Uh, you can definitely see more through their login than you can see through your um, parent uh, information. So um, sit down with them and uh, spend some time. Uh, as far as the ACT, I, I will say because of uh, COVID, there, there have been a lot of changes uh, from colleges uh, indicating that maybe they are now a test optional school, meaning that they don't necessarily need an ACT for admission to their school. Uh, more and more schools are, are jumping into this category. And uh, there are even schools who are saying that they're going to award merit-based scholarships um, without an ACT score. Now, after they talk about those couple of statements, then sometimes we hear, but there are additional scholarships at our website that um, an ACT could be helpful uh, for a student to earn those particular additional scholarships. So I, I cannot sit here before you tonight and tell you that ACT is not necessary. Um, I can say it's not necessary for some things, but I still do see uh, a need for it. So I, I am encouraging the students to maybe still try and get um, an ACT score, especially if they are a student who could potentially score well uh, that could put them in, in another category for scholarships that are outside of those merit-based scholarships. Uh, planning campus visits and talking to college reps, uh, this, is, this is a great time to start that process. I have visited with the students about uh, October 22nd and 23rd. Those are both days off of school for the juniors and the seniors. And uh, I have encouraged them to try and set up some campus visits. Um, given the fact that we don't know exactly what may happen in the spring, we're, we're hoping that schools stay open. We're hoping that we don't have to shut down again. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, you don't know, I don't know. And, and with that uncertainty, while schools are open, I'm kind of encouraging students to maybe get their feet on some campuses. Uh, if we do have some uh, college fairs, again, some of this is a little up in the air due to our current world situation, um, but UNO typically holds a college fair in the spring. I don't know if it will be held this coming spring, but it's a huge college fair that is well worth your time to go to. Um, if they do not have one in, in person, it is possible that they would offer that virtually. And, and as I get information about that, I will be sure uh, to share that with you uh, as I find out. Uh, and today and yesterday, as I was working with the juniors, I did offer them a couple of different uh, worksheets. One of them is, what do I do if I plan to make a college campus visit? And the other is a campus visit worksheet. Um, both of these pieces of paper should be in their possession now, and I asked them to bring them home to you this evening. Um, but those things are also available electronically in the Google Classroom. Uh, the what to do sheet has just kind of some helpful tips and, and ideas for setting up those campus visits and maybe what you should bring along. It includes some possible questions you could ask on a campus visit, uh, information along those lines. And then the campus visit worksheet I explained to the students today is something that they could use after attending a campus visit. Uh, I mentioned that as, as they do you know, two or three college campus visits, they may find the information kind of starts to blend together and they may forget which campus had which thing, you know, which, which dorm room had the furniture that I could move and which dorm room had the furniture I couldn't move, things like that. They may start to forget some of that information. So this campus visit worksheet was just a place where they could kind of jot down some ideas and information right after that visit while it's fresh in their mind. Okay, so again, a little bit more about SAT, ACT. Uh, the ACT, those tests are offered at Gross on the dates I have listed there on the screen, December 12th 
um, possibly April 10th. Again, assuming that we are open and, and all is well, uh, we hope to host the April 10th test. We are hosting the October 24th test. Uh, but that the deadline for that one has passed, so I just put up the, the future dates for you. Uh, other ACT tests that are available are in February, June, and July. Uh, those three tests, at, at this time, we are not hosting at Gross, but there are plenty of places around the Omaha metro area that students can take the ACT. Uh, if you are researching uh, schools of interest uh, to see which tests they prefer, uh, you may find that schools kind of within the Midwest area, very much an ACT area, as you kind of move out to the coast, the East Coast and West Coast, you may find schools um, looking for an SAT score. Um, so that just, just kind of in general, that's kind of what I've seen. Um, but I do always recommend the students uh, to kind of research the schools that they're looking at and make sure that the ACT or SAT, you know, whichever one is preferred by the school. So I do see most of our students take an ACT rather than SAT simply because many of our students kind of stay within the central United States area and that's, that's what schools will take. Uh, you can take the test multiple times. On average, I see students take it three times. ACT statistically reports that students' second test is usually their best test. Um, but again, that's a statistic, so sometimes that is true and sometimes it's not. Um, I do recommend using the free reporting. ACT does give students a four free reports for schools, and so when they're registering for the ACT, they can put in four schools that they would like their scores to be sent to. Um, I do recommend reporting all scores. Colleges will always take the best score so even if the student is, is kind of taking the first one with, without a lot of preparation, I still recommend sending it. It doesn't hurt. Uh, and again, schools will always, always replace a score if a student submits a better score. Typically, the December ACT is the last test that schools will use for scholarship considerations. So that's in reference to senior year. So the December test of their senior year is typically the last uh, test that schools will accept. Although this year, again, with things being a little bit different, several schools have pushed that deadline to the February test and have indicated that they would take a February score as well. You, as you can see on the screen, UNO has put that out um, as far as what they'll accept for an ACT score. And again, there is more information uh, related to ACT um, in the Google Classroom, there's a worksheet um, that I gave the students. In fact, it was in, in their packet of papers I gave them today and asked them to bring home to you. There's a whole sheet on uh, ACT information and kind of what it takes to sign up and numbers that you may need, things along those lines. So feel free to ask your student for that ACT information sheet. Uh, a little bit on retesting and super scoring. These were new things that were being offered by ACT. Uh, the section retesting was, it caused a lot of excitement and then it got pushed off. And so our, our current seniors were a little, little disappointed. They were under the impression that they were going to be able to uh, retest just individual sections of the ACT this fall. And um, that dead, or that, that opening of that, that, um, retesting option was pushed actually to uh, 2021. I don't have any specific uh, data from ACT yet, whether that will happen like in the spring semester or are they gonna wait until the fall of 2021? I haven't seen anything yet. As soon as I do, that's information that I will certainly share probably through something like the parent pause um, and I'll probably post it in the Google Classrooms as well. Um, but the idea with that is that students could retake an individual test rather than having to take the full ACT test. Uh, those tests were only going to be offered on the Saturday national testing days. Um, and it would be optional for testing sites to offer those retakes. It's my, my understanding that at this time, Gross would not be offering those individual retake tests. So you'd have to go to a different location in the Omaha area. Uh, super scoring is something that is currently being offered. I'll show you a little example of what that's all about. Uh, super scoring is if a student were to take more than one ACT score, uh, as you see the circled numbers on the screen, uh, 
their super score would include their best score from all of those three tests. So you can see that the June test was their best score for English, the September was the best score for math, et cetera. And then those four numbers are averaged together for their overall super score. So if you look at the composite scores along the right side of the table, you'll see that the April test was a 21 composite, June was a 22, September was a 21, but when we super scored, their composite score went up uh, to a 23. So it can be a real benefit uh, to a student to have that super score. Uh, the question is, how do schools use that data? Uh, some schools will use a super score for uh, admittance into school. I have not seen uh, really anything regarded, uh, regarding super scores being used for scholarship purposes. Um, but for um, being admitted to the school, some schools are accepting super scores for that purpose. Okay, so choosing a college. And we talked a little bit about this uh, in the classrooms recently with the, with the juniors. Uh, it's, it's good to think about size of the school. You know, would you be comfortable in a large or a smaller setting? Uh, the size of the city or town surrounding your college is, is also an important thing to consider. And, you know, do you want to be in a, a small college town or maybe more of a larger city where there's a little bit more going on around the college? Um, distance from home is a good question to ask. You know, how close do you want to be home? How often, how e easy do you want it to be to be able to visit home? You know, is your student one who would like to be able to come home for Sunday dinner every weekend? Or is your student one who uh, wants to go and come back at Thanksgiving? You know, these are things to kind of think about and talk about uh, over dinner at home now. Uh, academics, of course, you know, does it have the major that your student is interested in? Um, important to look at retention and graduation rates. I like to ask on uh, campus visits, I like to ask the tour guide what their uh, happiness rating is or their retention rating. What percentage of students are coming back to that college after freshman year? I think that's an important number to hear and to know because um, it really gives an idea of how happy the students are at that school. Um, of course, cost is a huge factor. Uh, so considering, you know, scholarships, what's the availability of scholarships? You know, does the university or college offer a lot of scholarships of their, you know, financial aid, work study, um, and of course, campus life? You know, what, what are some, some different clubs or organizations, activities that a school may have um, that would interest your students and make it a happy place for them to be? And of course, our number one and our students going to college is to get a good education. That's what we're paying for. Um, but I think that it's, it's, it's even more than that uh, in that it's, we're really developing them as, as human beings and, and we want them to be well-rounded. We want them to be happy. The happier they are, they tend to do better educationally. So if they're in a school where they feel comfortable and, and they feel happy, um, we tend to see better grades happen. So I see uh, poll question number three. I may have jumped over poll question two. I apologize for that. Um, but let's see if we can try poll question number three. Here it is. Okay, so uh, which statement best describes your situation? Um, we've already visited a college. We have an appointment for a college visit. We need to do a college visit and we'll find a date soon or we don't plan to do any college visits. So if you could kind of chime in on that. Let's kind of see where we're at as a group. Okay, it looks like most of us um, are wanting to do a college visit and need to find a date soon. And that's great. I'm glad to hear that you are looking forward to doing that. And I think we'll move on. Oh, on. Uh, campus visits, typically uh, you'll want to schedule those at least two weeks ahead. So if you're looking at doing something on the October 22nd or 23rd date, you might find that difficult to set up at this point. Um, but looking ahead, uh, you could certainly sign up online or call the admissions office to get that appointment set up. Uh, you'll want to schedule your visit as best you can when school is in session. I think that the students get a much better feel for campus when they visit, when things are happening, when the students are there. So, uh, you know, doing visits over the summer uh, or like over breaks may not give quite the same feel as to what uh, the campus has to offer. 
Um, but if that's your only option, I, I would still ask you to do that. So um, if you can do something when they're in session, that's great. We, you know, at gross, of course, I have to ask you to try and do that on days when we don't have school. Um, but the reality of the situation is you may have to take your student out of school for a day, but um, I, I can't endorse that a ton. <laughs> um, I get in trouble by administration. So um, try and do that when we have days off of school, if, if at all possible. I do recommend um, taking a look at a public school and maybe a private school. I know sometimes families will kind of write off those private schools and say, well, there's no way uh, that's that's far too expensive, and we're not even going to look at them. Um, but the truth of the matter is that those private schools actually tend to have more money available to give in scholarships and can can sometimes, oftentimes, can get the tuition down to a reasonable amount and make that doable for families um, just simply because they are private and have some more money available. So um, I encourage you to, to not necessarily cross those off the list too fast without maybe giving them a chance. Uh, I always tell kids, you know, you can apply, you can always say no later, but if you don't apply, you don't ever get the information or the package, the, the award package that kind of shows what it would really cost for you to attend. So I encourage students to get all the information before uh, they make a decision. Um, and always ask, you know, I always like to ask the students, you know, can you see yourself on this campus? Can you see yourself walking around? Do you see yourself fitting in here? Those are great things to kind of consider um, when you're on campus and after that campus visit, you know, have those conversations about how they felt on that campus. Okay, uh, Education Quest and the Junior Projects. This is what um, I just finished up my last day in the classroom today. I've had a great time working with the junior class. Uh, some of the things that we've done. So we've created an account at Education Quest, um, which is just educationquest.org. Um, you can go look at this website and look at this organization. We are so lucky um, to have this organization in Nebraska. It is a free service to Nebraska families. I'm going to say that again. It is a free, F-R-E-E, -E, free service for families in Nebraska. Um, and they offer uh, help with FAFSA, they offer help with scholarships. They offer help with um, applications if needed. They're just a great, great resource. And I find myself partnering with them um, frequently and calling them when I have questions. Um, but we did create an account on their website and their website has many, many resources and tools um, that we will continue to use. And I'll introduce them to more of them when they are seniors. Uh, but we did a three-part project here in October, and uh, this is part of their English grade. So if they don't uh, complete it, mm -hmm. uh, you may see something on their grade report um, indicating that maybe that wasn't complete, um, but it is a grade that they'll receive. Uh, the first part of the project, we started out with some career interest surveys and personality tests. Um, I encourage the students to take some time to really think about themselves, think about what makes them happy, think about what they're good at, uh, and, and I had great responses um, from the students. I asked them to write some personal reflections after we did some of these tests. And I had some really, really great responses. I'm so proud of these kids for taking the time to think about um, what they found um, in these tests. Um, and you can certainly ask them to show you their results. All of this information is in their Google Classroom. Um, in addition to the three tests that we did as part of the project, I did uh, load some more uh, possible career interest tests and personality tests in the Google Classroom, new tests, different tests um, that they could take in addition to the ones that we already did. I also provided them with some websites that have some videos that talk about different careers. So if they're kind of starting to figure out, you know, this career versus that career, they could maybe watch some informational videos to help them understand um, you know, what it means to be a chemical engineer or something like that. Um, we are working on writing a resume, and this is something that as seniors, I'll ask them to kind of refine and update that resume. And we built that resume in Education Quest at their website. Today, we spent time uh, researching colleges. We used the college profile tool at the Education Quest website. Um, and so they were kind of jumping all around the country, looking at schools and what it costs and, uh, you know, what average ACT scores are at a school or what room and board costs or what sort of majors are at, you know, these different schools. So it's a great tool to kind of get a quick snapshot of what the school has to offer. 
um, some, a tool that we did not use yet is the scholarship search tool. Um, it is my plan to, to go back in second semester and uh, kind of go through this tool with the juniors. Um, you're welcome to look at it with them now. I think it's, it's, I think it's easy to use. I think you could figure it out. Um, but I, I do plan to spend some time with them in the spring semester um, showing them how they can start researching scholarships to kind of create a list um, that maybe they would be then ready to apply for uh, in the fall semester or possibly in the summer, depending on when the scholarships open up and when those deadlines are. Um, it's good to kind of start researching and looking for those scholarships so they're ready to apply. Senior year does get to be pretty busy um, in the fall. Uh, well, we'll get to that in a little bit, but in the fall, they will start their applying their applications to college. And so um, they tend to get pretty busy. So researching scholarships now is not a bad idea. Um, Education Quest, as I mentioned earlier, they do offer free consultation appointments. Um, currently, those are being done virtually, um, but they do help families complete the FAFSA, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, college applications and, and scholarship searches. So they are a fantastic resource for families and for me. Okay, so in the fall semester of the senior year, as I kind of alluded to a little bit ago, um, I would encourage my seniors to retake the ACT or SAT if they're working to get a, a better score. Um, keep in mind that super scoring option and, and, and wanting to kind of check with the colleges that they're interested in to see if those schools use super scoring at all. Um, begin narrowing down that college selection. So hopefully by the fall of their senior year, Maybe they've done some of those college campus visits. Maybe they have one or two left to go, um, but kind of getting to a point where they know where they'd like to apply to. Uh, I will say that our current senior class um, was at a little bit of a disadvantage when everything got shut down this past spring. They weren't able to do those college visits. They weren't able to get those ACTs. And, and those families have um, been working through kind of a mad rush of, you know, trying to get sort of caught up, if you will. Um, you know, thankfully, as I mentioned, uh, schools are kind of changing their tune a little bit on the ACT and they're accepting students without that score. I'm seeing students receive scholarships without that score. Um, but as we move forward, you know, there's no guarantee that it's going to stay that way. Uh, although I have heard from schools that they plan to uh, maintain their school as a test optional school. So, it, you know, it's going to have to be. We're going to just have to continue to, to look and watch and research schools as we move forward and see how things change. Unfortunately, we're in a little bit of a uh, kind of an influx, if you will, um, with the whole ACT situation. Um, senior year, back to that list. Um, seniors are working on requesting letters of recommendation when needed. Um, I do ask them to give teachers at least a couple of weeks to write a recommendation. Um, asking a teacher to write a letter the night before they need it. Um, doesn't always go over really well, and maybe they're not getting the best letter that they could get. So um, <laughs> giving the teachers a little extra time is always nice. Um, of course, we're going to be completing college applications in the fall, being really careful to watch deadlines. We'll begin applying for scholarships that have fall deadlines. There are some that do have fall deadlines, although the bulk of the scholarships that we, we see and work with typically have a spring deadline. But you know, certainly there are some in the fall that we work on. Uh, attending the Omaha College Fair in the fall, if it's held, is a good idea for seniors. It's another chance for them to kind of touch base with some of those college reps if they're kind of getting down to those kind of those final decisions and deciding what schools they want to apply to. Uh, Gross typically holds a Catholic College Fair, although this year, unfortunately, um, that fair was canceled, not because of us, but because the colleges decided not to come. Um, because of COVID. So, but we usually hold that fair in September. Um, I do recommend that you attend a free FAFSA information night sponsored by Education Quest. Um, these are typically offered at area high schools. This year, uh, in the, this fall, those things were done uh, virtually. Um, so hopefully next year we can be in person again and be in the schools to have those nights. Um, the FAFSA does open October 1st um, for for our junior class who are gonna be seniors next year, um, they would be using the 2020 taxes for that document. And again, I'll talk about FAFSA a little bit more here in a bit. 
Um, and I kind of recommend for families to try and complete that FAFSA by the end of October. Um, watch for college priority dates um, because that FAFSA can be helpful as far as getting some grant money um, and the work study positions and things like that. Um, FAFSA information um, can be found at Education Quest and in the Google Classroom, especially during senior year. I post a lot of things um, in that senior Google Classroom. So the, the, the junior Google Classroom that now exists will become their senior a Google Classroom. That won't change at all. I'll just start putting in things um, related to senior year. I'll just continue that same classroom so there won't be a change um, in that classroom. Um, Education Quest does have uh, a nice checklist on their website that you can print off. And if, and if you complete that checklist prior to sitting down and filling out the FAFSA, it makes the FAFSA really easy to complete because that checklist has you collect all the information you need for that document. Okay, so what is the FAFSA? Well, it's a free application for federal student aid. It's a government thing, it's government form. Um, it's filled out online. Um, why should you complete the FAFSA? Well, it's free, it's fast, and your student could qualify for additional scholarships or aid of which they are unaware of, um, including maybe a work study position uh, could be awarded to them. And without completing the FAFSA, some of those things could be lost um, on that student. I've had students who have earned scholarships that they did not even actually like apply for, but they were awarded it because of their FAFSA. So who should complete the FAFSA? Everyone, all students, every year that they're in college, we recommend that you complete the FAFSA. And is there a deadline to completing it? No, not really, um, but the sooner the better. You wanna keep in mind um, that there's, you know, there's this pool of money and when that's gone, that's gone. So the sooner you apply for that FAFSA and get yourself in the pool, um, it's better. All right, so spring of senior year, um, that's when we are really pushing scholarships, lots of scholarship, op scholarship opportunities. Um, I asked the students to inform the guidance office of any award letters that they're receiving. We wanna know about every single scholarship they earn, even if it's from a school that they're not going to attend. We still want to know every single scholarship they earn. Um, you know, we ask the seniors to carefully weigh their options before making their final choice. Uh, and so that can involve some real heart to heart conversations with mom and dad as you're looking at those award letters and you're going through the financials of it and you're, you know, weighing in where they felt the best and the most comfortable. And, and those can be um, some really great conversations and, and sometimes some tough conversations, but, but we got to be real and make a good selection. May 1st is the deadline um, for college selection. So my current seniors this year, they have all the way till May 1st to make their college decision, as will um, our juniors, soon to be seniors. They will have till May 1st of their senior year to make that college decision. Um, and then um, in that spring semester, uh, we'll be looking at making housing deposits and kind of locking down those final details at the school. Um, best thing, and I always remind the seniors just to continue looking at your student portals, at your college um, sites, to look for to-do things in their to-do list. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. Check those college student portals. If a student is interested in playing a sport in college, they're going to want to register with the NCAA or the NAIA. Um, and work to get transcripts and test scores uploaded. Uh, my involvement in this really is typically just with the transcripts. I don't have my hands in much of any other part of it. Um, the students typically have to upload test scores on their own. So that's about all I have to say on sports in college. Some great resources, of course, are the counseling department. Um, those Google Classrooms, uh, I really, we really put a lot of great information in there. In a moment, I'm going to pop out of this presentation and show a little bit of what's in those classrooms. Um, senior newsletters are, are great resources for information and scholarships. Uh, emails, of course. I try to put good information in the parent pause. And of course, Education Quest is a wonderful uh, resource for our families. Okay, we have another polling question. Let's see how that goes. All right, which statement best describes you right now? <laughs> First, your head is spinning, and this is so much information. Uh, maybe you're saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Maybe you have a ton of questions. 
Or maybe you're feeling good and you're comfortable with most of this information. I do realize I just threw a lot at you. All right, well, we have a mix of emotions out there, it looks like. We have some heads spinning. We have uh, some folks with the, the, positive, the positive attitude. I think I can, I think I can. Um, we have a, a, some with some questions, that's good. And some that are feeling very comfortable. I love it. Okay, thank you for responding on that poll. Gives me a little bit of feedback. We're gonna shut that down. And we'll move forward. Okay, applying to college, um, a few things here. Um, application to college is online. I don't know that I've seen a paper application in the four years I've been here. It, it, it's all online. Um, completing the FAFSA is something that you definitely wanna do um, prior to applying for college. Uh, again, that opens October 1st. Uh, as I explained to the senior class this year, uh, if you, um, if you do complete the FAFSA and uh, you're selected for a verification, which is a random selection by the government, um, that they, they ask you to just kind of verify some of the information you've submitted on the FAFSA. Um, if you're selected for verification and you do not uh, submit the information they're looking for, it can hold up your award letter from the school. You actually won't receive that letter saying that you have this scholarship or this grant money or these loans are available to you. It kind of holds up that process. Um, so that's one thing to kind of keep an eye out for, that verification. Um, and I did talk to the seniors about that, but if you have more questions, happy to answer those. Um, the Common App is, is a great tool to use if you're applying to several schools um, that actually use the Common App. So I, I do recommend before jumping into that application, you check to make sure that the schools you're wanting to apply to do actually use the Common App. Um, it is a little bit of work to complete it, but if you're doing it for several schools, it can save you time. So it is a great tool if, if it's a good scenario for you. Uh, you should be prepared to pay application fees. Those can be anywhere from $35 to $60 um, to just apply to the school. Uh, we were looking at some of that information today with the juniors and, and they were a little surprised by some of that. Uh, but it is possible that students would receive a fee waiver. Um, those can come via email or in a letter in the mail, and um, those are not hoaxes. Those are a real thing, so don't throw those letters away. Don't delete those emails. Um, if, if you receive an email that indicates you can apply to a school for free, um, that is a real thing, and, and it's a good thing, so hold on to those letters. Um, after the applications are done, the next thing that you do is wait. Not my best thing, <laughs> but you wait for a decision letter and you wait for those award letters so that you can then use that information to make your best college choice. Uh, I do encourage students to, to apply to as many schools as they want. Um, on average, I see students apply to at least three schools. Um, some schools or some students, excuse me, apply to far more than three schools and, and some students are actually set on, they know what school they wanna to go to and they apply to that one. Um, you know, whatever the situation is, again, I'm gonna support your student in that. Um, a little bit on early decision versus early action. If you take a, take a little look here at this graphic, um, early decision, those apps are typically due around November with decisions sent out in December. Um, you can kind of take a look at the pros and cons here. I just want to point out that if the student applies with early decision, um, and if that acceptance is binding and they must withdraw their applications from other schools. So that's different from being uh, applying with early action. That does not bind them um, to that school in, in particular. It just could potentially get them some additional um, perks at the school for um, putting in an early action application. Um, so I, in, unless if a student is really, really sure that that's the school they want to go to, I would not recommend early decision. Like I said, unless if they're really, really sure that's where they want to go. Uh, most students apply um, with early action or regular decision. That's typically what I see here at Gross. Um, and, you know, they all have their pros and cons. So I'll let you take a peek at that. Okay, um, as far as applying to schools and kind of what the colleges are looking 
at um, grades, of course, is probably kind of the number one, and, and they do pay special attention to the rigor of classes. Um, notice I put a question mark by test scores. That's because uh, this particular um, aspect is a little in flux right now. Um, some schools are looking at test scores, and, and, and many are not at this time. Uh, the schools are interested in what activities your student has been involved in, what leadership roles maybe they've had, what talents they may have. Um, class rank notice is actually kind of down on the list. That's not overly important, not as important as the rigor of their classes and their grades. Um, those personal essays do come in um, as, as an important aspect, especially um, if, they're, if their grades are a little bit uh, maybe not quite up to what the school is looking for, that personal essay might be enough to kind of push them over the line. Uh, those recommendation letters and a potential interview could also be included in that application process. Um, but kind of looking at the top of the list, um, you know, having a well-rounded student who's involved in activities and having some leadership opportunities, those are great things um, for a student to include in their uh, application to a school. Hey folks, I forgot uh, that I was going to share uh, some Google uh, Classroom information with you and show you a senior newsletter. So I'm going to do that at this um, little video and then we'll share this out with everyone. So this is the uh, class of 2022, our juniors. This is their Google Classroom. Um, I'm underneath the classwork tab and you can see uh, this was the information related to our job exploration project. Uh, so the requirements for that project in addition to um, some additional resources uh, for discovering their future that those would be the additional uh, personality tests and career interest tests would be on that document and uh, this one, um, oh, it just offered uh, some additional information to the Myers-Briggs test uh, that they took some, uh, it shows, we'll bring it up real quick, but it shows the four letter uh, personality types and then it lists different uh, jobs that might go along with that personality type. So that's in the job exploration project. Uh, this is the college planning project that we just recently uh, kind of finished talking about in the classroom. This project is due on October 27th. Um, but within this um, section, I did uh, list uh, a document that has a bunch of questions that you could use for a college visit. Um, this is what to do if you plan to make a visit. So there's some good tips and ideas on kind of setting up that visit, what to bring along. And this is the campus visit worksheet that I mentioned um, in the in the previous video that you could use uh, after a visit to kind of just write down some information about the visit, what what your student liked, didn't like, uh, you know, what maybe surprised them, things along that nature. And then here's a document um, on writing scholarship essays. Um, part of their college planning project is to write a personal essay. We're actually doing a contest in the classroom. Um, and I would encourage you to ask your student about that contest and what they could win um, if their essay was selected. Uh, so this is information in the junior uh, college classroom. Uh, the senior college classroom is a little bit different. Uh, you'll notice, and I'll kind of scroll quickly, but um, there's a lot of information in the stream. Uh, there are some videos that I've made, uh, information related to ACT and FAFSA, things along that, that line. But um, in the classroom tab, I am very proud of, uh, there's some information in here regarding uh, the FAFSA. Education Quest does provide some uh, bulletins for us, so information that I share with the students from Education Quest. These are the senior new newsletters that we publish. Uh, for the students. I'll let you take a peek at one of those here. Oh, let me get to the top. So this was our newsletter that was put out at the beginning of October. Uh, so there's some information here at the beginning uh, regarding admissions process and transcript request, um, FSA IDs for the FAFSA, and then in the notes from the counselor, encouraging students to apply now. Uh, the FAFSA opening up October 1st. Uh, I did post a FAFSA informational video in the classroom and encouraging students to get those letters of recommendation started with teachers. 
Uh, we include ACT information for the seniors and tests that are available for them, um, upcoming dates, things that are happening um, at Gross. And then upcoming virtual college visits. We've been setting up Zoom visits for our seniors this year with different schools. So these are all visits that were happening um, mostly through the month of October. Uh, information from Rockhurst University, um, additional information from colleges. So as I get information, whoops, sorry. As I get information from colleges, I we tend to share that in the, uh, the newsletter. And uh, Nebraska was offering a free application for a little while from October 1st to the 18th. So we shared that information with the students. And then the last part of the scholarship is just, or last part of the newsletter, excuse me, is scholarship information. So these are scholarships that are kind of currently going on with deadlines coming up. These you see most of these have a November deadline. Here's a December 1st deadline. Uh, so we kind of uh, put scholarships in here as they are kind of relevant to the current month or month coming up. So, other, so otherwise we kind of would be uh, overwhelming our students. We don't want to do that. So we kind of keep the list down to kind of what's happening right now. So that's kind of what a senior newsletter looks like. Um, going back into the senior Google Classroom, um, I did produce that's a big word for me. <laughs> we produced uh, some videos uh, related to different aspects of college and I teamed up with Joan Jurek from Education Quest to make those videos. Um, so they're pretty, inform and pretty informative, I think, and, uh, and helpful for our students. So that's all available to the seniors. Um, those kinds of things would be coming to our juniors as they transition to senior year. So that's kind of what you have to look forward to. All right, folks, we're coming to the end here. Um, this road can be difficult at times and there's there is so much work to be done. Uh, I ask that you meet resistance with encouragement as you may encounter some resistance with your student. Um, they may get a little stressed out. So meet that stress with love and patience. Um, help your child to see the potential that you see and without fail, I encourage you to pray every day. Okay. That is at the end of our uh, conversation or my presentation, I guess. The conversation starts now. So, uh, Ms. Clements, if you have some questions uh, for me, I think we could kind of take a look at those now. I think I'll stop screen, sh stop the sharing and maybe get my face on the screen. There I am. Okay. I, oh, I see one maybe. Does Gross offer ACT prep classes for their students? Yes. Yes, we do. We have an ACT prep class that's um, actually uh, currently happening in this uh, semester. Uh, it, it's a quarter long class. So we typically have the seniors who are interested in that class uh, take it first quarter. So the seniors are just finishing up with ACT prep. And tomorrow we have a group of juniors who have registered for that class. They'll start for second quarter and the juniors will take it there. Um, we try to get the seniors in right away so that if, they, if they're looking to take another ACT, they can get that ACT prep course in prior to getting their test taken in that fall semester. Um, says you've heard three moms in a test, John Baylor, yes. Um, those are all programs that you could certainly look into. Uh, those all have a cost. Um, associated with them. So um, I do have a list. Let me see. Actually, right here on my desk. Oh, okay. Okay. I guess I have the questions in my chat. So we're good. Um, there is um, ACT online prep that I believe costs right around $40. That's on the ACT website. Uh, there is the official ACT prep guidebook. This is the book that they use for ACT prep here at Gross. It's um, right around $22. You can purchase that on Amazon and it has several practice tests in it and some other information to help with test prep. So you could look into that book. Um, John Baylor is around $300 to $400 uh, depending on what level you go with um, for John Baylor. Another one students have used is method test prep. That is about $250 for that program. Uh, three moms in the test. I don't believe I have a price for that, I'm sorry. Um, but I know there is a cost to it. I just don't have it um, researched here in front of me. Um, but those are um, programs that I've heard students who have talked about and, and felt that they were pretty successful using um, if you're looking to pay for a program. Um, I do think that Mr. Slope 
um, who teaches the ACT prep course here at Gross does does a pretty darn good job, um, and it's it's included in your tuition, so it won't cost you any additional money. Um, but there are some that you can certainly pay for um, to do. What was that? Oh, okay. Ms. Clements is saying that the library has um, tests, like practice tests that can be used, and the, the counseling office also has practice tests. If students wanted to come in, they could come in and pick up a free test and practice with that as well. I hope that helps with that question. Um, uh, someone says, I've tried to get some visits, but many schools are doing only virtual. Have you had any students do this and what have they thought? Um, that's interesting because I've actually heard a lot of schools are doing um, personal campus tours. They're not group tours. They are individual tours. Um, so that's, I, I'm surprised that I'm hearing someone say that because the actual schools are actually promoting that they're open and they want kids on campus. Um, so I haven't really had anyone do any virtuals or tell me about that. So I, I don't have a, a super good answer for you on that one. I'm sorry. Um, okay, that's uh, another question. FAFSA is important independent of income. I'm not sure what you're asking me. Um, FAFSA is important, yes. Um, regardless of whether you think uh, you're going to get any uh, grant money, FAFSA can help in other ways other than just providing grant money. I don't know if I'm answering your question. Um, so I do recommend that everybody complete the FAFSA. So the, uh, I'm wondering, uh, most of those fill very quickly. You must be referring to the, uh, the on-campus visits. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. I will offer to, um, if, if anyone would like to visit with me on the phone or have um, come into school and visit with me, um, happy to set up an appointment to talk to you. Um, oh, we have a question came in. Uh, I have a student who's taking the ACT prep class right now. Should they take the ACT in December? You, you know, I think that's a good idea. I think it uh, once completing the course right around that time where the test would be offered and all that information is kind of fresh in their mind, I think taking the December test is a great idea. Uh, you complete the FAFSA in the seniors uh, fall semester. Yes, yes. Junior families do not have to complete the FAFSA now. Uh, you complete that when your student is a senior in the fall in October of, your, of their senior year. Good question, thank you for clarifying. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in at this time. Uh, I hope what I've shared is helpful. Uh, if you, again, if you have additional questions or wanna to talk to me privately, um, I'm happy to meet with you, talk with you on the phone. Um, just get in touch with me, send me an email or call the school, happy to help. I appreciate everybody coming tonight and being a part of this and uh, look forward to working with you as we get our juniors to be seniors and then graduate those wonderful students so they can go on to the next step in their lives. So thank you for being here tonight. Um, everybody take care and uh, see you soon. Thanks.